the bookworm. Here was another bedtime story. And uh, I'm back in my class, as you can see. I think I've done another story here before. My boys and girls, my students have all gone to music. Do you like music? I like music. It's fun. Today I have a funny book we're going to share, and it's called Bedhead by Margie Palanti and illustrated by Jackie Davis. Excuse me, I have a cold. Bedhead. Shuffle slump, shuffle slump, slump, shuffle slump. Slump, bleary eyed Oliver out of bed, down the hall, and into the bathroom. He yawned. He yanked. Splashed some water. Swished some mouthwash. Gave his front teeth a passable brushing. And then, in a gunkless corner of a soapy silver soap dish, in a fogless smidgen of his father's foggy shaving mirror, right there on the hot water faucet, for heaven's sake, he saw it. It was big. It was bad. It was, and there we see, he got up in the morning, he's going to brush his teeth and stuff. I have trouble getting up in the morning too. It's hard for me to get going in the morning. How about you guys? I wonder what he sees. Bedhead. Oliver's hair was out of control. Way out of control. There was hair going this way, hair going that way, hair going up, down, around and around. And there was one teeny tiny clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's caught up fur ball. Ah! So there we see Oliver looking at the bedhead and his cat. Even his cat's kind of like, what? Have you ever woke up with a bed head? I know I, I have. A lot. Oliver's scream shook. It rattled, it rolled, all the way down the stairs and into the kitchen, where Fruit Loops went flying, milk was spilled, spit and sputtered, and two Toast Toasties did triple backflips over the breakfast table. Oliver? 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 shouted Mom, Dad, and Emily as they ran up the stairs and headed for the bathroom door. And now we see his family, they were eating breakfast. They were eating breakfast. And uh, heard him scream. Mom leaned close to the door. Closer, closer. That's right, even closer. Is everything all right, Oliver? She whispered in her calmest, calm mom voice. Come now, dear, open the door and let us in. No sound from Oliver. Not a whimper, not a peep. Please, said Mom. Pretty please. Pretty, pretty, pretty please. The doorknob slowly turned. Mom smiled at Dad. She gave a wink to Emily. There you go, she said, taking a step into the bathroom. Nothing can be that. And then we see Mom and Dad all at the bathroom door. And uh, Emily, his sister, all at the bathroom door, they don't know what they're about to see. You think they'll be shocked? Bad! Wrong. It was that bad. Yes, sir. No doubt about it, said Dad, surveying the hairy situation from sink side. Oliver, my boy, you're having one bad hair day. Major, said Mom. Total, agreed Emily. Maybe we just push it this way, Mom said, giving it a try. So his parents all see how bad it, his parents see how bad it is, and now they're going to try to help him get it calmed down. Boing, been there, done that, moaned Oliver. Perhaps if we just pull it that way, said Dad. Boing, been there, done that, groaned Oliver. I could curl it, offered Emily, ready to roll. Oliver stared a stilly stare at his sister. I don't think so. Oh, then we'll just wet it, said Mom. Yes, let's just wet it, they all agreed. So now they're going to try to use some water to hold it down. I've done that before, too. It doesn't always work for me, though. Sometimes it still sticks up. So they watered Oliver. They splished him and splashed him. Gave him a good soak and a dunk. Ah, they said, sighing a confident job well done sigh. Oliver's bed head was now dripping wet head. It was now one dripping wet head. And then... So there we see they got all this hair wet, soaking wet. Can't be very pleasant either. Let's see if it's gonna work. 
it dried. Boing, boing, bink, bink, boing. Hair started going this way. Hair started going that way. Then up, down, around, and around. And there was now a bigger clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's coughed up for a while. Oliver's kind of getting, you know, frustrated there. It's like, ah, can you imagine having hair that bad? I say we spray, shouted Dad, taking aim with a squirt. Yes, spray, spray, cried out Mom and Emily. So spray already, sputtered Oliver. So they spritzed him and sprayed him, and they gooped and glopped and moosed him. They even hairpinned him flat in five places for good measure. Ah, they said, sighing a confident job well done sigh. Oliver's bed head was now one slick gel head. And then, so now you see they used all the products they had, the hairspray and stuff to hold it down. Oh, wow. You think that's going to work? Let's see. Pins went flying, boing, boing, bing, bing, boing, boing, boing. Hair started going this way, hair started going that way, then up, down, around, and around. And there was now an even bigger clump of hair way at the back of his head. It looked just like a cat's coughed up fur ball. Oliver wondered, maybe if I just sort of, kind of, you know, brushed it a bit. No. No, the three shouted, seeing the boy with bristles poised. Whatever you do, no, no, no brush. So there they are, all the stuff's going, the hair's going this way and that, knocking stuff around. This hair's kind of crazy, don't you think? I wonder why they don't want him to use a brush, do you know? Too late. Oh yes, the brush got stuck. Not stuck in the hair going this way or that. Not stuck in the hair going up and down. Not even stuck in the hair going around and around, but stuck. Yes, very, very, very stuck in the clump way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's coughed up fur ball. Mom gave it a yank. Yow! Dad gave it a pull. Ouch! And Emily gave it one good long tug. Yikes! Well, said Mom, without a bit of doubt, that brush is stuck all right. Definitely stuck, decided Dad. A done deal, declared Emily. Then, just when they were all about to give up hope, Oliver saw the answer right there on the wall. So Oliver's got tears in his eyes. You ever had knots or tangles in your hair and your parents brush it or you brush it and like pulls on them? That hurts. He's got tears in his eyes. But I wonder what he sees. What is the answer? That's it, he pointed. The hat, the hat. Go get that hat. So without one more thought of a spritz, spray, or a dump, they all helped Oliver squish, smush, and cram every bit of bedhead, stuck brush and all, into his faithful old battered but true blue baseball cap. Well, almost. Eh, good enough. And with a kiss and a wave, Oliver headed off to school. Everything was fine. Everything was dandy. And then. So they crammed all that up under the hat. I don't know how they fit all that up under there, especially with the brush, but I wonder what's going to happen now. Mary Margaret, who sat in the third row, four seats down, one desk across from Oliver in Miss Oppenheimer's class at Biddlemeyer Elementary, looked over to him and said, You can't wear that hat. Oliver looked over to Mary Margaret. Can too. Can not. And just why not, demanded Oliver, holding tightly onto his hat. Mary Margaret grinned. Because it's picture day. P -p picture day, stuttered Oliver. Picture day, sang out Mrs. Oppenheimer standing in front of the class. Everyone line up for our class picture. Back straight, faces front, smiles wide, and and hats off. Uh, uh oh, said Oliver. Hats off. We're waiting, Oliver, said Mrs. Oppenheimer as everyone took their places. We're waiting, Oliver, said Mary Margaret. We're waiting, Oliver, said everyone else. And there's everybody waiting, wanting to get their picture made, get the picture taken, waiting on him. They don't know what they're about to see, do they? Hey, kid, said the man behind the camera. Yeah, you with a lumpy looking head. Off with that hat. Oliver him. Oliver hauled. But he knew he had it. He had it. He had it. He lifted the brim and slowly took off his old, fateful, old, battered, but true blue baseball cap. He held his breath. He closed his eyes. And he waited. He waited some more. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nada. 
He opened his eyes and looked up. There was no hair going this way, no hair going that way, no hair going up, down, not even around and around. And nobody could see the brush stuck in the clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked like a cat's cocked up fur ball. Ah, said Oliver, saying a confident job well done, Si. Ready, everyone, sing out Miss O, big smile, and say cheese. On the count of three, one, she said, two, she said, and then, then, then. So Oliver's feeling pretty good. Get ready to take his picture. What do you think is going to happen next? I don't think it's going to be good. Ba ba boing, 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 bing, bing, ba ba boing, 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 bing, bing, boing, boing, boing. Hair started going this way, hair started going that way, hair started going up, down, around, and around. And the brush that was stuck in the clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's cocked up fur ball let loose and boing Mary Margaret on top of her head and boomerang right into Mrs. Oppenheimer's nose. Three, said the boy Mrs. O, just as she and everyone else at Biddle Mike Elementary got a look at Oliver and his bed head. Ah, geez, click. Got it, said the photographer. So... And all that crazy stuff going on, and the photographer took the picture. And then we see in the yearbook, Mrs. Oppenheimer's class, and we see Oliver with his crazy hair. I guess one thing about it, you wouldn't forget anything. You wouldn't forget that year of school and that picture day. I really thought that book was funny. I enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dedicate that to my friend Celia. She's a hair artist is what I call her. She's amazing. Um, and uh, she runs a salon in Myrtle Beach, so you need to go to see Celia if you need some hair, anything done with your hair, really. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you'll keep watching. Like, subscribe, hit that bell so you know when I post something new, and I'll... Uh